Doom 2016 caught a lot of us by surprise. It was somehow both retro and modern, taking the established formula and making it exciting and challenging. It introduced a lot of us to ripping and tearing, and allowed us to make as many Doom Guy jokes as we pleased. And now we have Doom Eternal, a direct sequel to the 2016 entry. The first game was already pretty good, but its software needed to give audiences more, make sure it wasn't just a rehash. We got to spend a couple of hours with the game at our recent preview event, and while we can't say for sure how it all adds up, we can say for sure that id Software did, indeed, give us a lot of new elements to play around with. So we're going to give you a glimpse. We rounded up the 666, oh, okay, just six, most interesting new things to look out for in Doom Eternal. Creative director Hugo Martin stressed that one of the biggest changes to Doom Eternal was the addition of what he calls aggressive resource management. It sounds simultaneously metal and nerdy, and in a way, isn't that what Doom is all about? Regardless, unless you're an RPG or open world games fan, or you make a write about games, you probably aren't familiar with the concept of resource management, so for the uninitiated. It's basically when taking care of your inventory becomes a key aspect of gameplay. It tends to be a much larger part in RPGs where crafting and upgrading are common, but in Doom Eternal, it looks slightly different. In Doom 2016, you had to constantly find ways to refill your health, ammo, and armor. This was pretty simple since ripping and tearing granted you health and using the chainsaw on enemies granted you ammo. There were also resources scattered all over the map. This is still the case in Eternal, but the focus is on constantly ensuring you have enough stuff. You get the chainsaw much earlier in the game to ensure you make it an important part of your arsenal, and a new item called the Flame Belch allows you to burn enemies for bits of armor. There's even less stuff lying around, so you have to prioritize using the tools at your disposal. It creates a much more delicate balancing act and provides more complexity to the gameplay without getting in the player's way. At the very least, it ensures you'll actually use the chainsaw this time because I definitely did it the first time. In Doom 2016, there were essentially two ways to move. You were either running or you were jumping. And then sometimes you were double jumping. This was generally fine until you tried to jump and fell, which was awful. Now there are two more ways you can move. One is the dash. A little bit into the game, you gain the ability to dash, which is exactly as it sounds. You can now hit a button to dash quickly over a certain distance. The other is wall climbing. There are certain walls, tough to see at first, but easy to spot once you know what you're looking for, that you can climb to reach new areas. This all certainly speeds up and diversifies movement in Doom Eternal. But do you know what else it does? It leaves the room for even more complicated jumping puzzles. Doom 2016 was full of them, but they're even bigger and more challenging here. Whether you're dashing in the air to reach a platform that will eventually fall, or just want to reach that bar that you can swing off of, there is a much wider range of movement thanks to these two small skills. You know what else is an important aspect of Doom? The enemies, of course. Doom 2016 reveled in introducing new and tougher baddies even deep into the game, and Doom Eternal is no different. Sure, it has a lot more enemies up front, but that leaves room for even more demons to rip and tear. Just like with resources and puzzles, id Software has managed to make the enemies also more complex. Now a lot of the enemies have weak spots that you can directly target. The Kako Demon, for instance, can be stunned if you manage to get a grenade in its mouth. You can also target the Revenant's rocket launchers more directly to get rid of its primary attack. This of course helps when you're fighting these tougher enemies so you can tell how they're doing, but it also, like the resource management, changes up the player's strategy. You might save your rocket launcher or frag grenade for the Kako Demon, then switch over to something more long range to tackle the Revenant's cannons. There are definitely a few times I caught myself using the same weapon over and over again, and this makes sure I don't forget about the others. Doom is a retro series, so it makes perfect sense for it to have retro elements. If you thought that Doom 2016 wasn't enough of a throwback, then you're in for a treat with Doom Eternal, which might be the most arcade-like game I've played since I've been to an arcade. Ammo drops, bright colors, and secret exploring were always here to remind us, but what about one-ups? And not just extra lives, a floating orb that says one-up. That's all you need to know about Doom Eternal. The Doom Slayer, affectionately known as Doom Guy, is a simple man. He likes to rip and tear. He's buff, and he doesn't really care for your plot. 
For Doom Eternal, the team at id Software wanted to give him more of a personality, which is where the hub comes in. The hub, called the Fortress of Doom, is a place where you go in between levels to freshen up, upgrade some of your skills, and take care of your collectibles. Doom Guy has his own bedroom on the hub, where you can check out all the little toys you collect over time, but also explore Doom Guy himself. You'll find out he's still a simple man, but that he really likes the idea of a guitar made of flesh. It may not have been completely necessary to give Doom Guy a personality, but it's a nice little touch. And now you seek to defy the con maker herself. Martin said that one of the biggest criticisms his team received concerning Doom 2016 was that it became repetitive. This entry does have only two types of levels. You're either in space, going through hallways, or in hell. In Doom Eternal, however, there are so many more. You start off in space and are immediately thrust into hell, which is already a huge change from the first game. Then there are even more dimensions to explore. Hell is typically on fire, but a cultist base you visited in the third section is covered in snow and, dare I say it, greenery? It's tough to say how varied the environments will get, especially since the campaign is reportedly over 22 hours long, but it's a welcome change, at least for the first few hours. In general, though, there is just a lot more doom. There's more environments, more combat, more weapons, more enemies, more story? Not sure we needed that. Either way, we'll see what's completely in store when Doom Eternal hopefully hits PC, Xbox One, Stadia, and PlayStation 4 on March 20th, 2020.